Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Today we're going to look at a new to me proof of one of my favorite identities. And that's the identity that 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to n squared is the same thing as 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed all the way up to n cubed. So I think this identity is really nice because it's easy to write down and it looks really surprising. And two things before we get started. First, I found this proof in a two-year college math journal article by Barbara Turner. And second, well, let's look at some small examples of this identity. Starting with 1 plus 2 plus 3 squared, which is 6 squared, which is 36, which is also decomposed as 1 plus 8 plus 27, or 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed. Now, furthermore, you can do that with the fourth number as 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 squared, which is 10 squared, or 100, and then decompose that as, well, as you see, 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed plus 4 cubed. Okay, so now let's jump into this technique. Okay, so now jumping into this proof, we're going to need two sets. I'll call those sets A and B. And each of these sets has n plus 1 points. And I'll label the points in A, A0, A1, A2, up to An. And in B, B0, B1, B2, up to Bn. And these are points in the plane. And these points satisfy two conditions. First, no three points are collinear. Sometimes this is called being in general position. And then second, no line defined by points in A is parallel to a line defined in points by B. So what that does is ensure that every line that is defined by points in A intersects every line in points defined by B exactly one time. Okay. So now let's get into the heart of our argument, started with something simple. And let's note that the number of lines defined by points in A, or equivalently B, is, I'm going to write this as n plus 1 choose 2. And now a quick y of that, and that's because n plus 1 choose 2 is exactly the number of subsets of two elements of an n plus 1 element set. So that's something that's well known. Let's also recall that n plus 1 choose 2, that binomial coefficient, has uh, like a standard familiar formula that is n times n plus 1 over 2. And, well, if you know anything about the sum of these numbers, 1 plus 2 up to n, without the square, well, this object should be pretty familiar. And then also, well, let's count this another way as well. So let's do that. And actually, that's going to give us, well, the closed formula that I was just alluding to. So let's write this down. So number of lines defined by points in A or equivalently B is, well, I'm going to claim that it's the sum 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to N. And we can see that simply by, well, listing all of the lines. So there's this line containing the points A0, A1. There's a line containing the points A0, A2 up to a line containing the points uh, A0, A, N. And then, well, those are all the lines that contain the point A0. And then, well, we're going to look at the lines that contain the point A1. So we'll have, uh, let's write it right here, A1, A2. That's a line all the way down here to A1, A, N. Notice there's no point in putting a1, a0 because we always already counted it right here. And that's going to descend all the way down to our last line, which will have points a n minus 1, a n. And now we just like add these columns. So let's observe that there are n lines in this first column. 
there are exactly n minus one lines in this second column, all the way down, and there's a one line in this third column. So that means that, well, we've counted this number of lines defined by points in A, or equivalently B, as one plus two all the way up to n. So I'd like to quickly say that we've come up with the following classic identity for the nth triangular number just by counting the number of lines defined by these sets two different ways. And that is we've ended up with one plus two plus three all the way up to n equals n times n plus one over two. That being said, that's not our final goal, but that is a tool that we'll need along the way. Hey there, I'd like to take a minute to talk about today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. While watching my videos is a great place to start, you get more out of learning by doing, and that's why I highly recommend you sharpen your skills with Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI that are individually matched to your unique level. Each lesson comes with hands-on problem solving so that you can truly learn the material. It's been proven to help you learn six times more effectively than just watching videos. Content is designed by an award-winning team from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, Google, and more. You'll find yourself learning real-life problem-solving skills instead of memorizing equations. Brilliant can also be easily incorporated into your daily activities with fun lessons that you can do on your phone, tablet, or computer in just minutes a day. Check out the course library. They have lessons on vectors to help you learn the basics. You'll be comfortable with basic vector equations like scaling, transformations, polar coordinates, and the dot product in no time and will develop comfort solving complex problems in multidimensional spaces. But we're scientists here, so don't take my word for it. You should test it for yourself. Treat yourself to a unique hands-on experience by going to brilliant.org slash Michael Penn for a 30-day free trial and 20% off your annual subscription. Thanks once again to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so, so far we've counted up the number of lines defined by points in each of these sets. And we showed that, that those number of lines was equal to 1 plus 2 all the way up to n. Or also n times n plus 1 over 2. And I'll just put that equal for both of those. Great. And we did that by counting those number of lines two different ways. Okay. So next up, what we want to do is count the number of intersections of lines from A with lines from B. So let's write that down. So number of number of intersections of lines defined by A with lines defined by B. And observe that by our little rules over here, every line from A or every line defined by A will intersect every line defined by B. So, well, what does that mean? So that means we have the square of this number, number of intersections. So let's write that down. So there are one plus two plus all the way up to n squared such intersections, or, you know, we could write that as the binomial coefficient, or we could write that as this n times n plus one all over two squared. And, you know, while we're at it, let's just look at a very small example of this. So to keep things simple, let's take n to be equal to 2. And to color code everything, let's say that the lines defined by points in A are yellow, and the lines defined by points in B are blue. So let's observe that by that rule up there, we should have exactly three lines defined by A, so we should have three yellow lines. So let's say we've got one yellow line here, we've got one yellow line here, and then we've got one yellow line like that. And observe that the yellow lines could intersect or they could be parallel. Well, actually, they uh, cannot be collinear, so they could intersect at exactly one point or they could be parallel. This rule down here doesn't have anything to do about 
lines defined from points from the same set. Okay, so what I'm getting at is this is an allowable situation for our lines from A. Now let's look at lines from B. So perhaps we could have something like this. Okay, so that looks like a reasonable situation. We could have something like this. So that's also something that would be okay. And then furthermore, we could have another one over here like this. And observe that all of these lines from B intersect every line from A. So there's an intersection, there's an intersection, there's an intersection. And then here's one here, here's one here, here's one here, here, another one real close to that and the one that we had before and right there as well. And if you count that up, you pretty clearly get nine intersections. But observe that nine intersections, that's three squared intersections, or in the n equals two case, that is one plus two quantity squared such intersections. Okay, so now that we've counted these intersections one way, now we're gonna count the intersections another way, and well, that's gonna end up building our final formula. So we just finished showing that the number of intersections of lines defined by points in A with lines defined by points in B is one plus two plus three, all the way up to N quantity squared. And now we're gonna show that the number of such intersections, well, also equals one cubed plus two cubed, all the way up to N cubed, but if we're counting the same thing two different ways, then that means that those two numbers must be equal, but this object being equal to this object is exactly what we wanna end up showing. Now, we're gonna prove this by induction. Notice that the n equals one case is not super interesting. It comes down to the fact that one squared equals three squared. Furthermore, if each set has two points, then there's only two sets of lines, or sorry, there's only a set of uh, one line and another line, which will obviously intersect at one point. Then you could also use as a base case our example before, which was the n equals two case. So now let's move on to our induction hypothesis, which is now let's suppose with k plus one total points, there are well, how many intersections? Well, there needs to be one cubed plus two cubed all the way up to K cubed intersections. And then I won't write intersections where we know that we're counting that. And why do I have K plus one points here and not K points? Well, that's because we've got this zeroth, if you will, point from A as well as B. So we've really got one more point in our set than what we're working with, or sorry, the number that we're working on, if you will. So now let's throw a new point inside of these K plus one points we have. So let's maybe get a picture of what's going on here. So I'm gonna think about this set right here as being all of the points a0, A1, all the way down to, let's see, that should be AK. And then maybe everything over here is going to be all of the points B0, B1, all the way down to BK. Now, if we intersect all of the lines defined by these points with all of the lines defined by these points, we're gonna kind of obviously get that number of intersections just based off of this is our induction hypothesis. And so all of those intersections I'll say will happen right here. So I'll put one cubed plus ending at K cubed intersections. And then, well, I'm gonna think about A K plus one being outside of this set, maybe kind of on this side, and then B K plus one, being outside of the set on that side. And that's gonna give us, well, some new intersections. And what we need to do is count the number of new intersections. And well, let's notice the following. And that is that A0, A K plus one, A1, A K plus one, 
all the way down to AK, AK plus one, intersect all lines defined by, or from the set, I'll just use that as shorthand, B zero up to BK plus one. So now, well, that gives us a way of counting up the new intersections. And I'll just point out here that the new intersections from this type are k plus one times k plus two choose two. And let's see why that is. Well, the k plus one comes from the fact that there are k plus one a lines that we're working with. And the k plus two choose two comes from the fact that there are that many B lines that we're working with. And we're getting intersections of every A line with every B line. So by the multiplication rule, you would take the product of those. And now let's do something really similar, just switching A's with B's. So we'll have B0, BK plus one, all the way up to BK, BK plus one, intersect all lines defined by the set A0 to AK. You might observe here that we don't have an AK plus one and that's because that would overcount a certain line that we already counted or a certain group of lines that we already counted in this first case. So using really similar counting methods, how many new intersections do we have? Well, we have K plus one, that comes from the B lines, and then K plus one choose two, that comes from the A lines. That's because we're building it out of fewer A points than we did up here with the B points. Okay, so now let's maybe finish it off with a quick calculation. So after our induction hypothesis that there are one cubed plus two cubed all the way up to k cubed intersections, well, that we've been looking at. And then we counted the number of total new intersections after including an ak plus one and a bk plus one to be this number right here. So we had this first type that was next to our pink bullet point and this second type that was next to our blue bullet point on the last board. But those are the only two types of new intersections, so now we just have to sum those. But if we sum those, we get something nice. So let's factor this k plus one out, and then, well, use our definition of k plus two choose two and k plus one choose two to finish it off. So this is gonna be k plus two times k plus one over two plus k plus one over times k over two. So that's just the definition of those two binomial coefficients. Now from here what we can do is pull out this k plus one and we'll see that we've got a k plus one squared and then left over inside is a k plus two over two plus a k over two. But of course, k plus two over two plus k over two is gonna be another k plus one. You know, forged together with the others k plus ones, we have a k plus one cubed. So that means that there are k plus one cubed new intersections. So, well, that finishes off the induction step. So that means that four sets a zero up to a k plus one and B0 up to BK plus one, there are how many intersections? One cubed up to K plus one cubed. So, but then finishing off this induction step means we've finished the proof of this claim, but finishing off the proof of this claim, as we discussed before, is exactly what we needed to finish our main goal over here. And that's a good place to stop.